Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Dumping my cheating girlfriend and destroying her relationship with her family. I broke up with her three months ago. It was my first relationship, so I was stupid enough to ignore every red flag. I became friends with her when she had a boyfriend. She started flirting with me a lot, and after a while, she broke up with him to be with me. I felt very bad about this because the guy wasn't a good friend, but we hung out occasionally. When she tried to break up with him, he wanted to have sex with her out of frustration and anger for one last time, because it felt like she emotionally cheated on him. And although she consented at first, she felt raped afterwards. She is very insecure, so saying no is very hard for her. She told me really weird things during our relationship. Apparently, she was only thinking about me while she was having sex with her ex, and she wanted to kiss me many times while she was still in a relationship with him. We were together for two years. It was very stressful for me because I quickly discovered she isn't to be trusted. I had to convince her to block four different guys during her relationship because she didn't believe me when I told her a guy asking for a date doesn't want to be just friends. I did everything for her. I got herself an apartment because she used to cry every day about her mom being extremely toxic towards her. After a month of living together, she, almost, cheated on me with a co-worker. She hung out with him after work for like six hours every shift as she texted him that she was in love with him. I saw this when checking on her phone after she was lying about 90% of the things she was doing. She was always getting groceries or going to a friend while her co-worker was picking her up with his car. I was in absolute shock and couldn't read the other messages. The last message I read was that she felt so in love while hugging him, I broke up with her when she got home. I told her family she cheated on me, so she quickly cut off all contact with the guy to save face and expose me as a liar. She moved back in with her toxic family that had suddenly always been great to her. She started her new relationship with her best friend's brother after a couple weeks to further prove she never had anything with the coworker. Everyone blocked me and now I'm the bad guy because I have forced her to move out and I destroyed her relationship with her family. I truly hope karma exists. I'm feeling screwed up during the holidays while she is living life to the fullest. I know she does, because I was in the same position as the new guy is now. She will probably stay with him for years, while I have to take a long freaking time to trust someone again. The community reacts first with Springfield XD45. She's a worthless cum dumpster and treating everyone like crap will, very likely, come back to haunt her. She's gone for good. In the event she comes back, sorry, tell her to get bent. The OP responded with, Well, the thing is, she will treat like a king until you have no value to her anymore. That's when she will do anything to screw you up. She also posted a video on YouTube explaining that her ex raped her. She told me she did it because it helps her get closure, but she also wanted to take revenge on the guy. After some time, it became clear to me she actually did it so people wouldn't think of her as a cheater. Everyone was talking crap about her, so she uploaded that video to show people she was good and he was bad. The guy's life went to absolute crap for a couple months because of her. I still feel guilty that I helped her produce it. I was convinced she wouldn't do it for any wrong reasons. Coach EGK weighs in. Just wait, dude. She's going to do the same type of thing to destroy you also. And guess what? That is your karma. OP responds, Yeah, I definitely deserve the lies she is spreading around because I didn't stop her from doing it to her previous ex. I have accepted that part, but I just think it's unfair she hasn't been punished yet herself. Hot Scientist 957 has a thought. She sounds like a good one-night stand and that's it. OP responds, She will never have a one-night stand. She hates being alone, so she has to be sure you are willing to give her an unhealthy amount of attention and shows she gets bored of you and finds the next guy. You are right, though. She would be a good one-night stand. Because of her extreme insecurity, she does anything in bed to impress you, because she is afraid you feel bored if she doesn't. Sick RM has the next thought. You got off easy. A person like this would have ruined you for life. At least you know what to lay out for now. Learning from others is preferable. But... Experience is always the best teacher. Mindless Psychosis has the last chime in. The irony of this post really just makes me chuckle. I get that this was your first relationship, but goodness, you must be younger than 18 to have let yourself succumb to this. I hope you weren't looking for us to throw you a pity party. But having said that, it was pretty pitiful. I hope you learned from this like the other Redditor said. 
and the OP closes this out. I am 21 now, but I was 18 when I met her. You are right, and no, I'm not looking for that. I appreciate every reply because it gives me new insights. I ignore all the red flags because I fall in love with her. Lots of friends told me, you lose her how you meet her. But I thought my stupid butt would fix her way of thinking. Okay. Moving on. Full story. Two years after divorce, faithless ex-wife wants to reconnect. It had been over three years since I last spoke a word to my ex. She reached out to me last week and asked to speak with me. We had a one-hour phone call and that conversation brought this sad, miserable relationship to its ultimate end. This is my story. I got this forum a few weeks ago and have been reading avidly. It has made me sad reading the outpourings of so many broken hearts. I'm sorry to say it has also brought some comfort knowing I'm not alone in my situation. I haven't posted before because what comfort or advice can I offer when my own marriage failed so badly? But after my conversation with my ex last week, I realized there are so many similarities in all our stories. A series of checkboxes, and almost all of them are checked off. That is what compelled me to share. We met in Tennessee. I was 22, she was 27. She was in her last year of nursing school and I was in my last year of military service. We were both working doing deliveries at a local pizza place for extra money. We hit it off and became friends and after a very memorable party one night, became much more. She pursued me in truth, but I was attracted to her and more than happy to reciprocate. When my military time ended, I took her out to a nice dinner and proposed. I was so completely in love with her by that time. Our first year of marriage was great. I got along great with her family and my family loved her. We did almost everything together. Then in year two, things started to change. I was working full time and going to school at night, working on a degree in civil engineering. I tried to make the time we had together special, romantic, but nothing changed the fact that there was a lot less of it. I could feel her pulling away and losing interest in me. So I dropped out of school. I made a judgment that my marriage was more important. And I told myself I could always go back later. Things didn't really improve. I had learned something about her. She's like a kid who tires of her toys quickly. She becomes bored with it and moves on to a new toy. I try to keep her engaged and keep things interesting. Gifts, vacations, different kinds of romantic bonding. It was like bailing out a sinking ship. She offered little in the way of help or encouragement. It's exhausting to try and save a relationship when you are doing it alone. Then the cheating behavior began. This you guys all know well. She checked off the boxes. Protective of her phone and laptop. More frequent absences from the home. A complete withdrawal from intimacy. Affection from her went to zero, and even hugs and kisses from me were coldly received. I've read this so many times in other posts here. It's like cheaters don't want to cheat on their affair partner with their spouse. I knew it was going on, and I was highly motivated to catch her. We lived in an at-fault state, but she covered her tracks well. I couldn't prove it. I think she noticed I was checking out of the marriage. All my attempts at initiating affection, or hack even talking to her for that matter, stopped. After that, she tearfully confessed to an inappropriate relationship with a co-worker. She swore it was never physical. She made a lot of promises and apologies. I had never heard the term trickle truth before coming here, but I suspect I was served up a hot bowl of it with a side of blame shifting. She wanted to work on us. She wanted counseling for us. I believed her, or at least I chose to believe her. My heart, my intellect were not on speaking terms. We went to marriage counseling for a few weeks. That seemed to make her uncomfortable because the counselor asked some very probing questions about the emotional affair. I think she suspected, as I did, there was more to it. She discontinued after four sessions, but we seemed to be doing better. It was almost like I had my old wife back. I was very happy and decided to put all my unproven suspicions behind me. This lasted about six months until the cycle began to repeat itself. Once again, she checked all the boxes like before. I confronted her about it twice. She blew it off as stress on her part, or immaturity. I have everything for her to throw in my face over the whole relationship because of our age gap. On my part. Intimacy between us stopped, as she lost all interest in it, and in me. And then it happened. I came home and found her at home early. She was sitting on her bed crying. I sat with her and asked her, almost begged her, to please talk to me. She told me she was pregnant. For a fleeting moment, I was overjoyed. Then my brain began to engage. I suddenly remembered how long it had been since we had intimacy. I could see it in her face. I asked her how far along. Eight weeks. It had been over four months since we had last been intimate. I got up and left the room. She ran after me. Looking back and comparing the conversation that followed against the accounts of people's experiences on this very sub forum, I'm amazed how wayward spouses all say the same things. It was just a one time. It didn't mean anything. 
I only ever loved you. Of all the lies they tell, that last one stings the most. I told her I was leaving the house and would be back in one hour. Then I would listen to what she had to say. I was shaking. Furiously angry and in all honesty, it probably would not have ended well for either of us if I stayed. I drove to an empty parking lot and cried my heart out. I think I mean that literally because something inside me broke during that hour. My heart died. I turned to ice. And it still is to this day. When I went home, I was cold, emotionless. I didn't act like a gray stone. I had become one in truth. She insisted we could get past this. She saw how happy I was when she first told me before I realized. She commented on how we wanted to start a family. She did the baby's innocence in my face and how he, she, would need a father. This went on for nearly 20 minutes as I sat and stared at her in complete and emotionless silence. Finally, she looked at me and asked me to please say something. I told her she is asking for reconciliation, but nearly every word she is telling me is a lie. I told her she wants me to even think about it. She needed to start by telling me the truth. The version of the story I was told after that is it was the same affair partner all along. Even from the prior year, it was always and only physical. She never loved him. He is not interested in having any kind of relationship with her other than physical. He is pressuring her to terminate the pregnancy. She doesn't want to. She wanted a family and wanted it with me. I told her our marriage is over. It's been over for a year and a half, but I was just now finding out about it. I told her to pack whatever she needed for three days and to please leave the house. I told her I'd meet with her in three days to discuss what came next. She refused to leave. She kept trying to talk to me. Ordinarily, her tears would have broken my resolve, but I looked at her that night and felt nothing. The part of me that loves had died. I went into the guest bedroom and locked the door. The next day, I spoke to several lawyers and hired one of them. The virginity test of the child was more than enough proof for an at-fault divorce. I had no desire to wait that long, and we discussed uncontested and mediation. When I got home, she actually tried to initiate with me. I was shocked and disgusted. I told her that would never happen again. We agreed on an outline for divorce. The biggest asset was our house. The majority of our debt was her student loan. I gave up my ownership interest in the home so she could sell it. She was going to keep the baby, and I wanted her to have the money. I wanted nothing but to walk away free. In the end, I kept nothing other than my Jeep, my military sea bag full of clothes, and a few tools, firearms, and military mementos. Most things that were mine before we marry. Everything that house, everything she had touched, was just tainted to me. I wanted nothing from this marriage but to bury it in the past. The divorce finalized 13 months later. I saw her twice during the mediation. We barely spoke. She was very pregnant then. I thought that would be hard to see, but I felt nothing for her. No love, no hate, nothing. She was a stranger to me. I moved to Florida and took a job as an underpaid, but also underworked, civil servant. I have a very simple life now. I bought and renovated a small house in the Gulf Coast. I bought a boat and go fishing almost every weekend. I have very few friendships and have dated very little. I have trust issues now. I really don't enjoy the company of other people. I find myself suspicious of the attentions of women, especially ones I'm attracted to. I'm 27 years old now. I'm very physically fit and some girls find me attractive. But the idea of an intimate relationship with someone, trusting them to that level, I don't think I can do it. Not for a long time anyway. I am the opposite of the man I used to be in almost every way. All I have now is reserved for a happy black Labrador receiver named Stormy. She goes almost everywhere with me. I'm not exactly happy. I still get upset when something triggers me to remember my ex and all that happened. I still sometimes feel a tremendous and overpowering sense of loss. I know I have lost nothing because I really had nothing, but I can't help how I feel. The beauty of my job is I mostly work alone and in the outdoors, and I can often take my dog to work with me. If I haven't found happiness in divorce life, at least I found peace. I'll take it. Last week, the past I thought I'd buried two years ago reached out from the grave. She called my cell. I don't know how she got my contact info. It couldn't have been too hard. I wasn't exactly hiding. We spoke for an hour. It was amicable at first, but she made it sound as though she just wanted to see how I'm doing and catch up. But the hidden purpose of the call was to feel me out about some kind of reconnection. She gave birth to a healthy baby girl two years prior. The paternity test never in question because of the timing. The affair partner wasn't present for the birth and has little interaction with his daughter. The life of a single mother is hard and although she was getting support from the affair partner, apparently she had to take him to court for it. She was lonely and unhappy. I told her I was sorry to hear she was unhappy, but it was not my problem. I told her she had broken my heart and it was still broken today. 
I told her in as many words, I do not love her, could not love anyone, and wanted nothing to do with her. I said to her that she made all the choices for all of us. For her, for me, and for her daughter. She left me with but one choice, and that was to walk away from her. I asked her not to contact me again. The final similarity between all of our stories on this sub is this. A selfish person made a selfish choice and damaged the lives of three people, one of whom had not even been born yet. If there was one thing I wish I could make cheaters understand before they made the selfish choice, is that they are hurting everyone around them and possibly everyone around their affair partner. But if they are already selfish enough to cheat, it's likely they won't care. Our first reaction comes from Muff Nugget Eater. Glad you saw the light and got the duck out of there. But I'm sorry to hear how it emotionally scarred you. My best advice is don't let that experience rob you of a future happy and healthy relationship. Yes, there are bad apples out there, but there's also some good ones as well. You're older and wiser now. It's possible for you to find true love and happiness like everyone else. Good luck to you. Muckle T has the next comment. Tough story. But best part is, you made her be accountable for her actions. She has to live with the life of a messy situation that she alone allowed to happen. You sound like you have many reasons to be happy. Florida is absolutely beautiful. Fishing there is the best. And you have many years ahead for great things to happen to you. You are still on chapter 3 of a 10 chapter book OP. Make it a bestseller. One more comment from D Reddit Avenger. So, this is a really sad story. Essentially, you married a bag of crap, and that bag of crap has stopped you from having any emotional connections now. Worst of all, you don't even want to open yourself up to the possibility of love again. Love which is the greatest thing you will ever get a chance to do in your life. That is a much, much worse loss than a marriage to some a-hole, which is actually a win in the long run. You have been so busy mourning this marriage to this bag of crap that you haven't even noticed or mourned the loss of the potential of your life that you have given up on. Again, that is the real loss here. And that is my choice. The world needs good faithful men. You your kids need fathers like that. Good and faithful heterosexual women need good faithful men. Yes, love takes courage, but all good things in life do. Truth is when you marry a bag of crap, it's gonna smell. You did an excellent job of divorcing her, but you haven't really moved on. And again, that is just sad. Moving on. My story, surviving infidelity. My story takes place 25 years ago, when I was a third-year medical student. My girlfriend had two years was the love of my life. I was saving up for a ring. I spent all of my minimally available free time with her and trying to please her. She was a bit of a demanding girlfriend. She definitely liked expensive things and the finer things of life, like $150 jeans. This was a ton of money 25 years ago. I was a broke medical student with little free time, so she was not the happiest with me. When doing an away rotation, I found out she was cheating on me. She found another guy who liked to party more, and probably just more fun to hang out with. She moved out to be with him. She actually told me that it didn't matter if it was six months or four years from now, but she was sure she could get me back whenever she wanted. The audacity. We broke up, and I met my current wife two years later. Now, 25 years later, my wife and I make an excess of a million dollars a year and literally vacation six months out of the year without three kids. We are living my ex-girlfriend's dream life, and I can't help but smile at the thought of her working now as an online teacher. Her cheating on me was one of the best things to ultimately happen to me in my life. So hang in there, everyone. The infidelity could be very likely a blessing in disguise. Continue to focus on yourself, and good things will come. Our first response comes from Sick RM. She actually told me that it didn't matter if it was six months or four years from now, but she was sure she could get me back whenever she wanted. The audacity. Yikes. Being able to make a clean break from her completely changed how your life turned out. Hyperdeck Ultimate chimed in. The life of a medical student is rough. Long hours and not a lot of attention to the significant other. My sister lost stuck with my brother from his med student days, and now she's enjoying life now too. Got to be a great bull rider to stick to you guys. Your ex got tossed and probably will rue her lack of character to the end of her days. The women who can stay with you through med school and residency are keepers. The rest probably wants to wait at your finish line instead. This is the difference between the rewards of delayed gratification versus taking immediate pleasure. Poured grasshopper now freezing in the cold. Last comment from Soul Survivor 54 Told the story of running into my first fiancé a good decade and a half after we broke up. 
She had it off with guys she worked with and was still working in bars when she ran into me. She saw the kids, the wife, the lifestyle. She took one look at the life she screwed herself out of and ran off to have a meltdown in the back room. Yeah, happens. Tough crack on them. On to the next story. Why do people cheat down? I was reading a few articles and polls on the number of people who've been caught cheating and was only somewhat surprised to see the numbers, self-reported, of people who cheat down. It baffles me to no end on why. I've been trying to make heads or tails on why my soon-to-be ex-wife cheated and I was extremely surprised when I found out the guy she's been cheating on me with is objectionably way down compared to me. Bold. No offense to those that are bold. Shorter. Less symmetrical face. Out of shape to the extent that this dude is more out of shape than I've ever been in the past 10 years. This person is not good looking. Like at all. It's almost like a joke if it wasn't for her cruel actions. It has to be a sick joke. He's pathetic. On top of it all, he isn't smart like at all. He makes less money than me and is almost as bad at money management as my soon-to-be ex-wife. This is a rant of course, but has anyone else experienced this to an extreme? I understand beauty is subjective, but this guy objectionately speaking is a four at best. I'm not going to be on the cover of Sexiest Man Alive, but I am significantly better than this sour-looking excuse of a weedle. Maybe it was meant to be an easy fling that was to be discarded when it became inconvenient, and now finds yourself tethered to this weak, ugly human because of my discovery? Fly Guy chimes in. Couple things come to mind. When people have affairs, it's largely to fill the gaps they perceive they have with you. When she connected with this guy, he never had to compete with you. All he needed to do was listen to her complain about your shortcomings and filth gaps. That's why affairs don't last. Think of it this way. You provide 80% of what your ex needed and wants. She dwells on the 20%. Complains over her partner. A fair partner listens. A fair partner provides what's needed. Now she's at 100%. You find out and leave. It gets real and a fair partner needs to fill the whole 100%. Now she's out of his lead. Another reason is this could be about her confidence and self-esteem. Whether sure or not, she could have felt inferior in her relationship. Again, not necessarily anything you did. It's just her lack of self-worth. So she binds a loser, and all of a sudden, she is the smart one, successful, better looking, etc. The OP responds, You are wise, friend. I tried telling her every day I loved her. Every day no matter what, because she said her parents never told her they loved her unless she said it first. I made a point to care for all her needs, bought a house, made it a home for us. I took care of all the hard things for her so she didn't have to worry about stressing a next promotion or working long hours away from home. I was even trying to help her get a good job to help fulfill her sense of worth. I'm not perfect, far from it. But God damn it, I worked myself to exhaustion every day trying to take care of her. Mrs. Jingles, the 0729, has the next thought. They don't plan on anyone knowing about them, so they don't care if they're smart, attractive, thoughtful, all the things you want in a spouse. They just want the attention to feed their ego, not the person giving it to them. The OP responds, that makes sense. But to throw away a beautiful history of overcoming challenges with your spouse when you finally made it in life, is to throw it all the way for objectionably lesser man or woman? And our last comment comes from Alive and Well. They cheat with inferior people so they can control that person. Their low self-esteem has to be propped up as they are a god or goddess to their far partner, friends, acquaintances. I bet you are taking less and less crap from her at her spending laziness or outright not being nice to you. They need a fix to straighten their effed up minds. <laughs>